start off with a question that I want you to contemplate or consider for just a moment. Déjeme preguntarle una pregunta primera. What language does God speak? ¿Qué lenguaje usa o habla Dios? <laughs> I saw him already say Spanish. I saw him. <laughs> alguien dijo, alguien dijo español. The reality is he speaks every language. La realidad es que él habla todas las lenguas. Sometimes uh, people will get a little bit more uh, theological and so they'll say God's language is love. Uh, muchos este, usan teología y, y dicen que el lenguaje de Dios es el, el amor. And, and that's true as well. Y eso es verdad. But I'm asking a little bit of a different question. Pero quiero preguntar algo más. I, I'm asking if Spanish people speak Spanish. Si los que hablan español hablan español. If German people speak German. Los alemanes hablan el alemán. French people speak French. Los franceses francés. If you were to ask the question, what is the native tongue of God, what would it be? Si, ¿qué es la lengua de Dios que es? And, and the best I could probably answer it for you, and it almost seems uh, inadequate, is that the native tongue of God would be called a language that we would call God. Y casi es un poco sencillo, pero el lenguaje de Dios básicamente es el lenguaje de Dios. The problem with that is that we never took a class that taught us the language called God. Nosotros nunca tomamos una clase que con el lenguaje que habla Dios. You can take a Spanish class. Puedes tomar una clase de español. German class. Una de alemán. You, you can take a French class. Una clase de, de francés. Of course, you can take Hebrew and Greek, which are not necessarily God's native tongue. Hebreo y griego también, pero no es el, el lenguaje de Dios. But there is no class or way for us to learn a language called God. No hay una clase que te enseñe el lenguaje de Dios. So how do we get communication from God? Así que ¿Cómo recibimos la comunicación de Dios? Well, sometimes he speaks through uh, prophets where he gives impressions el, and, and they communicate it within their understanding. Él, él habla a través de profetas y, y que le dan comunicación. So the prophets were really what we call messengers of God or interpreters of God. Los profetas eran mensajeros de Dios. We, we could say that Jesus was probably the best interpreter of God of all of them. Podemos decir que Jesús fue el mejor interpretador de Dios. And when he came to give us a message from God, he started with an everyday practical experience that out of life and he put a eternal concept of truth with it. Y cada vez que él hablaba el lenguaje de Dios, lo hacía prácticamente con una enseñanza bien sencilla. We call them parables or stories. Eran parábolas, historias. They, he, get, he talks to us sometimes through dreams or visions. Nos habla sobre lo que es por los sueños o las visiones. Uh, he talks to us through illustrations like the potter and the clay. Por el alfarero, el, el barro. But it's always about taking his, his truth and putting it in a context or a way that we can understand it. Pero siempre él enseña agarrando la verdad y poniéndolo en, una, con, en un concepto que nosotros entendemos. So when I began my journey in ministry, Así que cuando empecé mi ministerio, and I wanted to ask a particular question of God, quería preguntar una pregunta de Dios. I asked the question, what does a healthy church look like? La pregunta es, ¿cómo se mira una iglesia saludable? And as I began to look in the scriptures, y cuando miro por las escrituras, I discovered that he gives us an illustration or an image that we can uh, uh, learn to understand what a healthy church looks like. Descubrí que Dios nos ha dado una imagen, uh, uh, una, una porción de la Biblia para mirar cómo se mira la, la iglesia. He began to give us imagery that we can begin to illustrate and begin to apply truths to so we can find out if our church is doing well or where it's struggling or how we can improve our ministry. Así que miramos una imagen de cómo podemos nosotros uh, tomar la temperatura de la iglesia. And with that, I begin to ask the question, and I'll get to the image in just a moment, but I begin to ask the question, if this is what the image looks like, how do we go from where we are to where we're supposed to be? Si Dios dice que tiene la imagen que ser así, entonces, ¿cómo nosotros podemos tomar la iglesia y tomarla esa, ima esa imagen? And, and so for me, the answer to that was, it was about following a blueprint or taking a journey a pathway that would move us from where we are to where we need to be. Así que para mí fue como un mapa que me guía de aquí a ese punto. You know, we enjoy the privilege of GPSs today. El GPS es bien importante estos días. You, you can put in where you want to go. Le pone ahí la dirección. It can identify where you are. Le te pica donde está. Push the go button. Le, pu le pone. And it will tell you when to turn and how many miles to go. Y le and it will take you to your destination. Le da todas las direcciones. 
And that's really what coaches do. That's really what consultants do. They, they ask you the question, where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in a year from now? And where are you now? And how can we navigate a pathway to get from here to there? Los entrenadores es lo que hacen. ¿Dónde quieres? Si quieres ir de aquí a allá, ¿qué? ellos te van a guiar. And so I began to look at this concept of what is the image and what is the process whereby we move from where we are to where we want to go. Así que empecé a, a estudiar qué, qué es la imagen y cómo puedo yo de este, de ese punto a este punto. And that's where this word positioning came to me. Y es cuando la, la, esta palabra posicionando. Positioning is still a relatively new word, wor, word in the church culture. En la iglesia, en la cultura de la iglesia, posicionando es una, es una palabra nueva. But it's not a new concept in the world's con language. Pero no es un nuevo concepto en el mundo. They've been talking about positioning for years. Ellos están hablando, han estado hablando sobre posición por años. They, they might even offer a service, for example, like positioning your church on the web. Hasta usan recursos como posicionando tu iglesia en las páginas de web. So that when somebody searches for a church in Oklahoma City, your church will come up on the first page. Así que cuando quieren buscar tu iglesia, la encuentran en, la, en la, las páginas. Or they might talk about positioning your church in the marketplace. O hablan de posicionando su iglesia en el lugar de la marqueta or a business in the marketplace o el, el, la marqueta de negocios so they can know what services you provide and how you want to connect with your community para que sepan qué servicios usted provee so, so when we talk about the word positioning from a secular standpoint cuando hablamos de la palabra posicionando sobre el punto de vista de secular so, so when we talk about the word positioning in the secular world sometimes it's used as advertising or marketing or branding of a particular concept or service or good. So uh, when, we, when we start off referencing certain goods or products or services, we might say, uh, think of a Coca-Cola product and you can imagine a Coca-Cola product in your mind. Or if I say pizza, you might imagine some kind of a pizza product uh, or uh, Domino's or, or Papa John's or some particular, because they have branded themselves or they have positioned themselves in the marketplace that whenever somebody says, I want a pizza, you think about their brand. When somebody says, I want something to drink, you think about their soda. When you think about certain restaurants, you think about their restaurant as the place to go because they have positioned themselves in the marketplace. And so sometimes the church thinks that what we need to do by positioning is just create awareness about who we are. And certainly, I think it's good for the church to be known. Some people think that marketing is a bad thing for the church. They think it's very secularly driven. But I tell people, if you have a church in, a sign in front of your church, you're already marketing. If you have an ad in the yellow pages, which is really outdated probably today, then you're already advertising. If you have a, a web page, you're already marketing your church. If you have a business card that has your name of your church on, It, your marketing. Así que vamos, estamos mirando. <laughs> vamos a cuando la, el mundo secular está eh, posicionando su iglesia, eh, su, su negocio. Usted nomás mire de estas, de estas marcas y ya conoce. Pero en el mundo espiritual, en, en términos de la iglesia, cuando están posicionando su iglesia, usa la tarjeta o usa algo para que sepan que esa es su iglesia. So when I'm talking about positioning, I'm not just talking about marketing. I'm talking about making sure that what's going on inside the church matches what you say to the community that you are. Así que cuando estamos hablando de posición, estamos hablando de que lo que usted está promocionando de su iglesia, que cuando vengan a la iglesia, eso es lo que es. Some people create their website and they get all these uh, free graphics and pictures of families that they post on their website that, that they've never met these people. Muchos este, usan eh, eh, fotos de personas bien felices que nunca han ellos visto. And they talk about all the programs they offer and, and the music program that they have. Y hablan de todos sus programas y toda su música que tienen. And people look on the web and they say, wow, that sounds like a church I want to go to. Y muchos miran en la página de su iglesia y dicen, oh, yo quiero ir a esa, a esa iglesia. And then when they get there, they say, where are the The people we saw on the internet. Y cuando y cuando llegan dicen dónde está la gente que miramos en internet. Where are those programs that you talked about? ¿Dónde están esos programas que hablaron ahí? Because they didn't match on the inside who they said they were on the outside. Es que no daban uno con el otro. 
So a few years ago, I was in the Philippines and, and doing a number of training events over there. Hace muy, varios años estuve en los Filipinos haciendo entrenamientos. I'd been there for about three weeks and I was getting really tired of eating the Filipino food. Estaba ahí por tres años, ya me estaba, tres, tres, mes, tres semanas y ya me estaba cansando de la comida ahí. So we were kind of in a remote area and so I just began to walk up and down the streets looking for a different kind of restaurant. Así que empecé a caminar para ver si podía buscar un restaurante diferente. There was no American fast food choices to choose from. No había algo americano. But they had one restaurant that advertised itself as a Mexican restaurant. Pero había un restaurante mexicano. Of course, we know the Spanish had influence in the Philippines. And so I thought, finally, I'm going to get a real Mexican meal. I'm going to enjoy a, a Spanish food. Dije, por, uh, ahora ya voy a empezar a probar algo diferente, algo mexicano. It had a Spanish name. Tenía un nombre hispano. All the lettering on the windows was in Spanish. Todas las palabras eran en español. We went inside and, and all the decor was uh, looked uh, Hispanic. La decoración era todo de español. They had the menu and it was all decorated with the Latino theme. Todo el menu era el, con el tema de latino. But as I'm looking through the menu, I can't find any Mexican food on the, on the menu. Cuando estaba mirando el menu, las palabras no encontraban ningún plato mexicano. So I called the waiter over and can you explain this to me everything says that you are a Mexican restaurant but there's no Mexican food on this menu así que le hablo a la señorita y le digo todo todo eso todo lo que está aquí no da con lo que está sirviendo. He said, oh yes, there is. Look right over here. Dice, sí, así, mira en, este, en esta parte. And he showed me on the menu that there were two choices. Y me, me enseñó que habían dos para escoger. A taco and a burrito. Un taco y un burrito. <laughs> And I said, why do you think that qualifies you as a Mexican restaurant? Dice, ¿por qué están haciendo esto? He said, have you seen how many Filipino restaurants there are out here? Si ¿Sí, miran cuántos restaurantes filipinos están acá. If we advertise ourselves as another Filipino restaurant, there's no reason for people to be drawn to us. Sí, cuando, cuando hay otro restaurante filipino, no hay otra manera de cómo la gente va a venir. So we advertise that we're a Mexican restaurant. Así que dije, por eso empezamos a marcar como mexicanos. And when they come in and see the same menu the other restaurants serve, fue nuestra estrategia para llegar a que la gente venga a nuestro restaurante. They say we're not going to find any different food anywhere else, so we might as well stay here and eat. No vamos a encontrar otra clase de comida, así que nos vamos a quedar aquí a comer. So it was Mexican by decor, but not by menu. La decoración era mexicano, pero el menú no era. And this is what happens so many times with churches. They present themselves to be one thing, but on the inside they're something completely different. Esto es lo que pasa con las iglesias, presentan algo allá afuera, pero adentro es diferente. So positioning your church is about making sure that who you say you are and how you connect to your community is adequately matched by what you're doing on the inside of those four walls. Posicionando su iglesia significa de lo que usted está promocionando es lo exactamente lo que está pasando dentro de la iglesia. So that brought me back to this question to God, what does a healthy church look like? Así que me es me empecé a preguntar, ¿qué cómo se mira una iglesia? Saludable. How, how can we study the church in, in scripture? ¿Cómo podemos estudiar la, la iglesia en la escritura? And the more I look, the more I realize that the image that God gave in scripture for us to understand the church is the, is the image of the human body. Y lo más que estudié, lo más que me di cuenta de la imagen del cuerpo humano. There's actually three major passages of scripture that illustrate for me how to look at the church through the eyes of God and understand what a healthy church or a healthy ministry should look like. Hay tres pasajes en la Biblia que me di, me di cuenta que nos, nos tipifica cómo se mira la iglesia, cómo se debe de mirar. The first one is Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezequiel 37. Most of us call it the vision of the valley of dry bones. Muchos lo conocemos como la visión de los huesos. I suggest to you that's the wrong title. Esa no es el título correcto. Because the real title should be this. Porque el, la, el título correcto debería ser esto. How to raise up a great army. Cómo levantar una buena ejército. Because it's really not about valleys of dry bones and leaving them the way they find them. Porque no se trata de nomás los huesos ahí secos. It's about looking at a situation that is unhealthy. Es de mirar una situación que no está saludable. And taking it through a transforming process that it's alive and effective and functioning well. Y llevándolo a un, una posición de que está transformada, que está vivo y que está funcionando bien. So when he looked at the valley, these were all these bones and all these bodies and they were dry and they were dead and they were disconnected. Así que cuando él mira todos estos huesos secos y muertos. But by the time he gets done with the vision, 
para cuando él termina con la visión the bones are together, los huesos ya se han juntado whole, los cuerpos están juntos them, el suspiro de Dios está en ellos like y dice que se levantaron como un ejército grande sure there, like no, se, no, no pierda enfoque en, enfoque en ejército grande porque la palabra army means a group of people on a mission with a purpose porque ejército significa un grupo de gente con una misión con un propósito and that's really God's image of the church esa es la imagen de Dios para la iglesia a group of people on a mission and with a purpose un grupo de gente con una misión y con un propósito so is there continuity is there unity in the church así que hay unidad en iglesia is there a mission that the church is endeavoring to accomplish hay una misión en iglesia Do they understand their purpose, their reason for being, why they exist? Entienden su propósito porque existen. Because if they understand why they exist and they know their mission and they come together unified, then they become the church that God envisioned. Porque cuando entienden su misión, su propósito y su unidad, entonces vienen a ser la iglesia que Dios quiere. A second passage is found in 1 Corinthians where Paul talks about the church as it relates to the human body. En segunda de Corintios miramos la iglesia como el cuerpo humano. He says we're one body but were many members. Somos un cuerpo por muchos miembros. He says the hand cannot say to the foot I don't need you. No puede la mano decir a otro el pie que no lo necesita. The eye cannot say to the hand I don't need you. El ojo no puede decir al pie que no lo necesita. He said all the parts of the body are important. Dice que todos los cuerpos, todas las partes del cuerpo son importantes. But the goal of that passage says, pero el, el el tema de esa posición es is that all the parts of the body would work together in harmony que todas las partes trabajen juntos en armonía that there be no divisions and no strife que no haya división so that the, it can function in a healthy way the, God, the way God intended que funcione bien como Dios quiere que funcione a third passage that uses this illustration is in Ephesians chapter 4 la tercer pasaje es en Efesios 4 We know this passage because we usually refer to it as kind of being the office gifts. Miramos este este pasaje como how como los gave, dones. How did he give the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, and the pastor and teacher? Todos los, la lista de dones que tiene ahí en ese pasaje. For what purpose? Por qué propósito? For the perfecting of the saints. Para perfeccionar a los santos. The maturing of the saints. Madurar de los santos. The equipping of the saints. Para equipar a los santos. To properly prepare them so that they can come together and function like a body properly fitted together. Para prepararlos para como un cuerpo que funciona bien saludable. I, I'm not a Greek scholar. No soy un escolar en griego. But I am intrigued by the word that we find in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12. Pero soy una palabra que me interesa en, Efes, en Efesios. The Greek word that we translate perfecting, maturing, or equipping. La palabra griega que significa perfeccionando, madurando. Actually has a word picture assigned to it. Tiene una foto a esa palabra. Word pictures are word association so that if I say something you immediately capture a mental image or an imprint of what I'm talking about. La, una imagen de palabras significa que cuando yo hablo de algo ya hasta se está imaginando de eso. So if I say pizza you can see a pizza in your mind. Así que si digo pizza se está hablando When es, Paul was talking to the Ephesian believers cuando Pablo está hablando a los Efesios, he intentionally used a word that grabbed their attention. Intencionalmente usó una palabra que agarrara su atención. And the Greek word that he used literally translated. Y la palabra griega literalmente traducida means to straighten out the disjointed. Significa es de ser bien derecha lo que se ha dividido. It's the image of a part of the body being dislocated. Es cuando se, se descoloca un miembro. We've all probably seen those sports injuries where a player had their shoulder dislocated or a hip dislocated. Hemos visto muchas ecuaciones cuando alguien se descoloca un, una parte de su cuerpo. And you know these athletes they are well conditioned and they're they're strong. They've exercised and they're really in many ways the, a great example of health and strength. Muchos atletas son están bien equipados, bien fuertes y bien entrenados. 
But as long as one part of their body is dislocated, pero si algo de su cuerpo está deslocado, it doesn't matter how much how healthy the rest of their body is. No importa qué tan saludable su cuerpo es. That body cannot do what it's supposed to do. Ese cuerpo no puede hacer lo que tiene que hacer. As long as part of it's dislocated. Cuando algo duele o está deslocado. A few years ago, my wife was walking down the hallways of our church. Hace varios años mi esposa estaba caminando por las por las la, la, la iglesia. She's the choir director, so her arms were full of music. Ella es dirige el coro she didn't notice at the transition where she was leaving the carpet and going to the tile no se dio cuenta de que estaba dejando de la carpeta al uh, al mosaico that there was moisture on the tile y, pero había uh, como mojado mojo en el el mosaico so when she made that transition immediately she slipped y and the books went going everywhere y cuando ella pasó esa transición se resbaló y los libros fueron por todas partes she reached out her arms and natural to try to break her fall ella trató de sostenerse and she dislocated her shoulder y se descolocó su hombro so we immediately had to reset it put it back in place there on campus así que inmediatamente tuvimos que otra vez colocarlo but then we had to go to the doctor and she had to go through physical therapy and everything because the tendons had been stretched and the body had been damaged. Y luego empezó a, la llevamos a con el doctor para recibir terapias. The doctor will tell you she has a great heart. La el doctor te dice que ella tiene un buen corazón. Kidney functions great. Que funcionan bien sus sus The digestive system is healthy. Su, todo su sistema está saludable. Everything's fine except for her shoulder. Todo está bien excepto por su hombro. And she can't function the way she wants to because one part of the body is injured. Y no puede funcionar bien porque una parte de su cuerpo está mal. She can't wash the dishes the same way. No puede lavar los, los trastes she bien. She can't drive a car the same way. No puede manejar bien. She can't get dressed the same way. No puede vestirse bien. Because one part of the body that's out of place Porque una parte de su cuerpo duele. is preventing the rest of her body from act, from being able to act in full capacity. Está previniendo que el resto del cuerpo actúe bien. This is, the, this is what's happening in churches. Esto es lo que está pasando en las iglesias. You have a lot of healthy things going on in your church. Hay muchas cosas saludables que están pasando pasando en la iglesia. You have great worship. Hay mu buena alabanza. You have great preaching. Buena predicación. Maybe you got great greeters in the lobby. A lo mejor tiene buenos sugieres. And you could go through the ministry and say this is good and this is good and this is good. Y usted puede mirar la lista que diciendo todo esto está bueno. But why are we not quite hitting the mark? Why can't we not just really be as effective as we're supposed to? Pero por qué no estamos siendo efectivos como deberíamos de ser? Because all it takes is one part of your ministry to be disjointed. Porque todo se, se lleva a una des, la locación de su ministerio. Que va a hacer lo demás doler. So positioning your church is about looking at the body, looking at the church like a human body, así, and asking the question, what's dislocated? Así que posicionando significa mirando qué es lo que está deslocado en la iglesia. What's not functioning the way it should? Que no está funcionando bien. And congratulations, pastors. Y bienvenidos, pastores, bien hecho. He says it's your responsibility. Porque yo sé que es su responsabilidad to straighten out the disjointed. De empezar a colocar todo bien Your en su lugar. Your job is to fix what's out of place. Su trabajo es de colocar todo en su lugar. The apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. El apóstol, el evangelista y maestro. Are to get the body back where it belongs. Es empezar a colocar las partes en su cuerpo. So it can function healthily in a healthy and effective manner again. Para que pueda funcionar bien saludablemente. So that's going to take me back for a moment to Ezekiel 37. Así que me voy a regresar a Ezequiel 37. Because in Ezekiel 37, we're going to see in, in the way I look at this, that there are four layers or four levels in which you take a church from being broken to being healthy. Así que vamos a mirar cuatro niveles de cómo llevar la iglesia de que esté quebrada, esté lastimada, a llevarla que sea saludable. Or you take it from being unhealthy and you position it to be healthy again. Que una iglesia que no está saludable, llevarla a que sea saludable una vez más. In Ezekiel 37, he took the human body, he broke it down into four components. Así que en este pasaje, miramos dos niveles. 
The first one was cuatro, the skeleton. Cuatro niveles que la primera es el esqueleto. The skeleton is important because everything about my body hangs on the skeleton. El esqueleto es bien importante porque todo lo que tengo en mi cuerpo está sostenido por el esqueleto. If I don't have a skeleton or an infrastructure, si no tengo un esqueleto o algo una estructura, then I, we would all be like bean bags on the floor. Entonces seríamos como esas bolsas que aguadas en el piso. Mushy and gooey. Todo nomás moviéndose como But aguados. But we can't stand up. We can't Can't function. Nos no nos podemos parar, no podemos funcionar. Be careful, Mark. He's <laughs> come up with all kinds of lines for me over there. <laughs> the skeleton. So, so the skeleton is important because what your church will ever become is really dependent on what size of skeleton you have. El esqueleto es importante porque el, el tamaño de tu iglesia depende del tamaño de tu esqueleto. We have a, a couple of small children, I think, here today. But imagine with me for just a moment that I had an eight-year-old boy standing next to me. Imaginemos que si tuviera un niño de ocho años aquí al lado de mí. He's a growing boy. Está creciendo. But his skeleton is the size of an eight-year-old boy. Pero su esqueleto es el tamaño de uno de ocho años. I recently turned 55. Yo tengo 20, 55 años. What would happen if you took my 55-year-old body and put it on the skeleton of an 8-year-old boy? ¿Qué pasaría si yo tomara mi cuerpo y lo pusiera en un esqueleto de uno de 8 años? It would fracture. It se, would break down. Se quebraría, se fracturaría. Because it's not strong enough to handle 55 years of physique or fine-tuned body, right? <laughs> Porque no está fuerte para sostener un cuerpazo Just como el de Just making sure you're listening here. <laughs> un cuerpazo cuadrado como <laughs> So this is exactly what happens to churches. Eso es lo que pasa con las iglesias. We go to conferences and seminars to learn how to grow our church. Vamos a conferencias para saber cómo crecer la iglesia. We, we start new ministries. Empezamos nuevos ministerios. That attract new people. Para atraer nuevas gentes. But because we never change the skeleton. Pero porque nunca eh, cambiamos el esqueleto. We can add 50, 75 or 100 people to the church. Podemos agregar muchos a la iglesia. But in a short period of time it's going to break down. Pero un poquito de tiempo va, va a caer. Because it's not built to handle the extra load. Porque no está eh, construido para sostener toda esa gente. Easter Sunday. En el, el día de, de resurrección. We'll have an extra hundred people let's say on Easter Sunday. Viene mucha gente a la iglesia. But six weeks later Pero we're el, back to the same size we were before Easter. Seis semanas después estamos a otra vez bajamos de tendencia. Why? ¿Por qué? Because we did everything we could to grow one part of the church. Hicimos todo lo posible para crecer una parte de la iglesia. But we didn't do anything to expand the, the skeleton. No hicimos nada para expandar el esqueleto. Here's the good news. Esto es la buena noticia. Your church skeleton is performing perfectly for the size of church you have. Tu esqueleto de tu iglesia está, está uh, operando bien para el tamaño de tu iglesia. Whatever size your church is right now, your skeleton is perfectly designed to handle that load. Cualquier el tamaño que está tu iglesia, tu esqueleto así está. That's why it's that size. Por eso es ese tamaño. If you want your church to go to the next level, si tú quieres que tu iglesia llegue al otro nivel, you have to grow the skeleton. Tienes que cre eh, crecer el esqueleto. You have to add on. Tienes que agregarle. Just like if somebody wants to add two new bedrooms to their home because they're a growing family. Así que cuando que tenemos con, construir agregarle otros dos cuartos a la casa, you got to pour the foundation before you add on those rooms. Tenemos que hacer la fundación antes de construir esos cuartos. You have to have the skeleton. Tiene que haber un esqueleto. My brother's been a home builder for over 25 years in Oklahoma City. Mi hermano es eh, contratista. And I said to him one day, y le dije un día, You know they always have these parade of homes. Siempre tienen esas casas casas grandes. All these builders finish their homes and they invite the community to come and walk through them and fall in love with one of them and then buy one of them. Construyen una casa bonita y invitan a todos para que la miren para que compren una. But I said to my brother, have you ever noticed? Pero le dije a mi hermano, ¿has con, has, ¿te has dado cuenta de algo? They never have a parade of foundations. Nunca tienen una, 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 un desfile de fundaciones. They don't go out there and pour the concrete slab and invite the community. Come look at the concrete we just poured. No va a hacer una fundación y invitan a todos. Miren, miren mi fundación. This is going to be one of the best houses in Oklahoma City. Esta va a ser una de las casas mejores en, en esta ciudad. Or, or they don't put the, the walls up. O no ponen las paredes. This the two by fours. Los, los, los dos por cuatros. And they say, come look Look at the at the wood structure that we built in this house. Dicen, vengan a mirar esto, lo que estamos construyendo. They don't invite you to come out and look at the rough in plumbing. No te invitan a mirar lo, lo plomero. And you walk around that house and say, honey, 
That is going to be one great toilet right there. Yes, sir. Usted no va a venir y decir, eh, oye, hermosa, esa va a ser una taza de baño bien buena. We don't get excited about the skeleton. No nos, no nos excitamos del esqueleto. We don't get excited about the infrastructure. No nos, no, no, no nos excitamos de la construcción. But it's one of the most significant factors in determining what size our church is ever going to be. Pero es una de las partes bien importantes de qué clase de, de tamaño va a ser una iglesia. Over an extended period of time, you will not be able to have more people than what your structure can handle. Por un periodo, tu iglesia no va a poder sostener lo que tú quieres sostener. So you have to expand your structure Preferably before the crowd arrives. Así que usted tiene que expandar la estructura antes que llegue la gente. So when you see the increase, you're already ready for them. Así que cuando viene, viene el crecimiento, ya está listo para ellos. The second part of the human body is the sinews or the sinews. La segunda parte es los sinews. It's talking about the human operating systems that attach themselves to the skeleton. Que está hablando sobre el sistema operativo del cuerpo. In other words, um, my digestive system hangs on the skeleton. Mi sistema digestivo. My, my uh, circulatory system, the blood circulation, sits on my skeleton. Mi sistema circulatorio donde circula la sangre. My, my muscular system is uh, resting on my skeleton. Mi sistema muscular, todo está, está pegado al, al esqueleto. Depending on whose biology course you uh, went through, it's estimated that we have about 13 human operating systems that are attached to our skeleton. Dicen que tenemos 13 sistemas operando en nuestro en nuestro esqueleto. And so you you could have a, many areas of your body could be very healthy. Muchas áreas de su cuerpo pueden estar bien saludables. But as I illustrated with the dislocated shoulder, pero como ilustré con el el hombro deslocado, all it takes is one system to be unhealthy. Todo lo que se toma es un sistema que sea insaludable. To prevent your body from being able to function at its best. Que previene que tu cuerpo funcione bien. About the same time Robin had her accident with her shoulder. Mi esposa tenía su su accidente con el hombro. I had undergone chest pains. Yo también había pasado por un tiempo que me dolía el pecho. And had to undergo a, a procedure to put a stent in. Y tuve que tener cirugía. When the doctor showed me the, the, the information on the screen, uh, the initial reports, they looked like little small uh, pieces on the, on the screen. Cuando miré las, los radios X que el, el doctor me enseñó, se miraban como unas, unas, unas venitas chicas. And I could have said to the doctor, Doc, that's just so small. I don't need to worry about that. Y yo le podía decir al doctor, eso es tan chico, no le necesito preocuparme de eso. He said it may look small. Y dijo el doctor, es, es chico. But all it takes is one of them to put you on the ground. Pero todo lo que se lleva es algo tan chico así para tirarte en el piso. That's why I say when you're looking at your church. Así que cuando digo, cuando están mirando su iglesia. There may be a lot of your ministries that you're very proud of and they're very strong. Hay muchos ministerios que usted está, se siente bien de ellos. But it just takes one ministry that's unhealthy to undermine your strength and your effectiveness. Pero se lleva un ministerio que no está saludable que está tirando todo lo demás. So we have to look at the systems in the church and make sure they're functioning the way they should. Así que estamos, necesitamos mirar los sistemas y su función en la iglesia. In Ezekiel 37, the third part was the skin. En el 37 de Ezequiel miramos también la piel, la, la tercera parte. Now in this case I'm not talking about necessarily race. No estoy hablando sobre la raza. I, I, skin represents what we would call demographics. La piel se, re, significa o representa lo que es lo demográfico. It represents the kind of people we are. La clase de gente que somos. And the kind of people we're trying to reach. Y la clase de gente que estamos alcanzando. It can be age. Puede ser edades. Young generation, midlife, older adults. Nuevas generaciones, jóvenes o medias o ya más viejos. It could be uh, a, a race. Puede ser ras, razas. It could be education. Puede ser educación. It could be economics. Economías. What I'm trying to say to you is that that you have to know what what your what your skin looks like. You have to know how to connect and be relative and relate to the people you're trying to reach. Lo que estoy tratando de decir es que cómo se mira su iglesia tiene que ser una piel que se relaciona con lo que los están alcanzando. Every church is, has a unique personality. Toda iglesia tiene una personalidad única. In, in my three places of ministry, en mis 
en estos tiempos de ministerio the two prior to coming to Oklahoma City and where I pastor today mis pastorados antes de llegar aquí a Oklahoma City my ministry gift has always been multi cultural multi ethnic churches en mi una de mis dones es este haciendo la iglesia multicultural Even at Faith, we have 50 different nationalities that worship there every Sunday morning. Ahorita en mi, en mi iglesia tenemos como 50 nacionalidades que adoran juntos. But that's not going to be everybody's church. No va a ser la iglesia para todos. Your community might be predominantly white. A lo mejor su comunidad es básicamente or anglo. Or Hispanic. O hispanos. Or African American. O African Africanos Americanos. But what I'm saying is you have to know your demographic. You have to know You got to know. You got to be comfortable in your skin. Tiene que conocer su demográfica. Qué 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 es lo que está en su iglesia. And don't try to be something that you're not. No trate de ser algo que usted no es. In my very first pastor, Cuando, pastorate. En mi primer pastorado. Uh, I was uh, the, the place where I was pastoring was a church that was about 75 years old. En el lugar donde estaba pastoreando ten, tenía como 70. Cinco años de existencia. For years it had been white middle class. Por muchos años era anglos. But over 75 years the community had changed. Pero a ver, la comunidad había cambiado. It was now very poor. Ahora era pobre. A lot of drugs and alcohol. Mucha droga, alcohol. Gangs and prostitution. Gangas y prostitución. So the Fresno City Police Department named the area around my church Hell's 40 Acres. Así que eh, la, los policías empezaron a nombrar esa área eh, los, las 40 acres del infierno. Porque había tanto crimen y tanto malo que estaba pasando en esa área. For a boy from Newcastle, Oklahoma, this was culture shock. Para mí era algo una cultura totalmente diferente. If God had not gifted me for diversity, In myself, I didn't have the ability to reach a diverse community. Si Dios no me hubiera dado el, el don para hacer la iglesia multicultural. But as I'm preaching, the church is growing. Entonces Dios cambió y empezó la iglesia a crecer. It was Father's Day and a young lady had come to visit her father on Father's Day in our church. Él era el día de padres y una mujer vino a visitar a su papá en la iglesia. And after the service, she came up to me in her attempt to make a compliment. Y después del servicio ella vino y trató de darme un complemento. Un complemento. She, didn't, she didn't say it quite right. No lo dijo tan bien. She meant to compliment me when she said these words. Trató de complementarme con, con esas palabras. You're better than this place. Tú eres mejor que este lugar. You could pastor in a much larger church. Tú puedes pastorar en una iglesia más in grande. A, in a better neighborhood. En una, en un, una vecindad mejor. The quality of your ministry could do better than this place. La calidad de tu ministerio puede ser mejor que este lugar. And you know, all of us are human enough to like our egos, you know, stroked every now and then. Ah, y eso me hizo algo a mi ego, ¿verdad? And at first I, I took that and was kind of inflated. Al principio me sentí un poco orgulloso. But after a little while I began to, to feel like there was something wrong with what she said. Y después de un momento pensé y dije, hay algo malo con lo que ella dijo. And so I began to pray and say, Lord, you brought us here and you've given us this gifting to minister to these people. So what am I supposed to do? Y dije, oré, Señor, tú me trajiste aquí para ministrarles. ¿Qué tengo que hacer? And real quickly, and we'll take our break. He, he gave me the story of, of Jacob and Laban. Y me dio la, la historia de Jacob y Laban. And you know, Jacob worked for seven years to get Rachel, got Leah, worked another seven years and finally got the wife that he wanted. Jacob uh, trabajó un total de 14 años, siete por una, uh, herma, una de las hermanas y siete por otra de las hijas. And then he said, it's time for me to leave. I need to start my own herd have my own family and my own future y Jacob, by myself Jacob dijo es tiempo que yo me vaya para empezar a uh, vivir mi propia vida But Laban said, you can't leave. Pero Laban le dijo, no puedes irte. Because ever since you've been here, I've been blessed. Porque desde que tú estás aquí, yo he sido bendecido. And Jacob said, I've got to go. I've got to start my own family, my own future. Y Jacob dijo, tengo que irme para empezar mi propia familia, mi propio futuro. But Laban said, stay here and we'll grow together. Pero Laban dijo, quédate aquí para crecer juntos. And Jacob said, well, how will we ever know your flock from my flock? ¿Cómo vamos a nosotros a distinguir tu ganado your, de mi ganado? Your sons are jealous of me. They'll always say that we're stealing one another's sheep tus hijos es, tienen celos de mí and then the light came on y luego se le prendió el foco and Jacob said to Laban here's what I'll do y Jacob le dijo a Laban 
I'll take all the spotted ones. Esto es lo que vamos a hacer. Voy a tomar yo a las que tienen manchadas. I'll take all the speckled ones. Todos los que están, tienen manchas. I'll take all the blemished ones. Todas las que tienen su, 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 sus manchas. And you can have all the ones that don't have any markings on them. Y tú puedes tomar todas las que no tienen manchas. You and I know the significance of that. Así tú y yo vamos a significar. The a, ones that were without blemish got a higher dollar at the marketplace. Aquellas que estaban manchadas, sin mancha, agarraban más por ellas. Because they were not to offer any sacrifice that had a marking or a blemish on it. Porque las ofrecían como sacrificio porque estaban limpias, sin manchas. Basically, Jacob was saying, I will take what society considers to be the lesser. Básicamente, Jacobo estaba diciendo, yo tomo lo que la sociedad considera que es menos. God's going to use you to have the prime. He's going to have me to do the rest. Dios te va a usar a ti para que ministres a lo que es lo, lo primordial y yo voy a, Dios me va a usar con lo esto. And then God gave Jacob a plan to put white sticks out among the herds. Y luego Dios le dio el plan a Jacobo para poner estos palos blancos en las, en, con el ganado. I have prayed and prayed for revelation why white sticks made them want to reproduce faster. <laughs> y, y he estado orando y orando que el Señor me, diera, me iluminara por qué los palos blancos. But Jacob's herd multiplied more rapidly. Y en eso el, el ganado de Jacob empezó a multiplicarse más rápido. The lesser by the world standards en lo menos por el estándar del mundo multiplied more rapidly se multiplicó más rápido because of God's favor and blessing upon him. Por, por la el favor de Dios sobre él. And the Lord spoke into my heart and said, "Always take the spotted ones." Y Dios dijo en mi corazón, siempre agarra lo manchado. If you'll take the ones with spots and blemishes, si tú si tú tomas aquello con el que está manchado, I will always cause your ministry to multiply faster. Yo voy a causar que tu ministerio crezca y se multiplique. I have to tell you, I was so excited about this message. I took it to the pulpit to preach that Sunday. Yo estaba tan entusiasmado de este mensaje que lo prediqué ese próximo I, domingo. I thought they would be excited about it. Yo pensé que iban a estar bien entusiasmados. De ese mensaje. But they didn't like being called spotted and speckled and and blemished. <laughs> Pero no les gustó que les dije que estaban manchados y que estaban con manchas. Until I reminded them that the Bible says we've all been stained by sin. Ahí luego les recordé que la la Biblia dice que todos hemos been blemished by something. Sido manchados por la santa sangre de Jesucristo. But His blood washes it all away. Que la sangre de Jesucristo nos lava. Makes us pure and whole. Nos purifica. And we become able to multiply in the kingdom of God. Y podemos multiplicar en el reino de Dios. Amén. Last point. Last point. I got to get this to you for the break. Último punto. One was word was the word spirit. Y la última era el la el lo que es el espíritu. There you go. For those of you who need it in English, it's coming. There it is. Spirit. El Espíritu. So in the vision, Ezekiel said, Lord, the bodies are all together, but there's no life in them. En la visión, dijo Ezequiel, todo ya está el cuerpo, pero no hay vida. And he says to Ezekiel, prophesy to the wind. Y le dijo a Ezequiel, profetiza al aire. And say to the wind, breathe upon these bones that they may live. Y dile al aire que respiren estos huesos para que vivan. And Ezekiel said, I did as I was told. Y Ezequiel dijo, hice lo que me dijo Dios. And I prophesied and the wind came upon them and filled them. Y profeticé y el viento sopó. Y los levantó. We know this is a symbol of the Spirit of God. Sabemos que esto es un símbolo del Espíritu de Dios. And they rose up on their feet like a mighty army. Y se levantaron como una un ejército grande y fuerte. Pa pastor Stan has told you that I am from the Assemblies of God background. El pastor Tolo les ha dicho que yo es yo es mi denominación es este Asamblea de Dios. So a lot of my Pentecostal friends they don't like it when I teach this lesson this way. Así que muchos de mis amigos pentecostales no les gusta cuando enseño esta clase de Because they want to put the spirit all the way at the first step. Porque primero pueden quieren quieren poner el espíritu primero. If we just pray more. Si no oramos más. If we just fast more. Si ayunamos más. If we just have more revivals. Si tenemos más eh, avivamientos. Then the rest will take care of itself. Y todo lo demás se va uh, se va a sostener. But I remind them, if God does move in your church. Pero les recuerdo que si Dios se mueve en tu iglesia. And does send you a hundred people. Y empieza te, te da cien personas. If you don't have the infrastructure to handle Them, si no tienes el esqueleto pro apropiado, you won't be able to keep them. No los vas a sostener. And then it dawned on me as I looked to this text. Y, y me, se me recordó a mí. The first three steps are our responsibility. Las primeras tres pasos son es mi responsabilidad. That's us positioning the church. Es nosotros posicionando la iglesia. So that he can do only what he can do. Para que él pueda hacer lo que él puede hacer. We can't do the spirit's work. Nosotros no podemos hacer el trabajo del espíritu. Only the spirit can change the heart of men. So 
solo el Espíritu puede cambiar el corazón del hombre. And so it begins to shout out me, out to me. Así que empezó a darme este, este, senti este sentimiento. We're not waiting on God to bless our church. No estamos esperando que Dios bendiga nuestra iglesia. God's waiting on us to position our church. Dios nos está esperando a nosotros para posicionar nuestra so iglesia. So can handle the blessing para that que, He wants to send to para you. Para que sostenga la bendición que le está demandando. And that's why we teach and talk about positioning the church. Por eso enseñamos posicionando la iglesia. We do our part. Hacemos nuestra parte. Then God does His part. Y luego Dios hace lo demás. Some plant, some water. Unos plantan, otros echan agua. But God gives the increase. Pero Dios es el que da el crecimiento. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll stop with that. We'll take a break.